Institute of Engineering and Technology. Hello students, after defining optimization for function of two variables, today we are going to discuss about a special case of optimization and this case is constrained optimization for which we are going to discuss a method of Langragin multiplets method. So before starting this last part of our partial derivative, let us recall how many terms are required to solve this constrained optimization problem. You need to know what do we mean by tangent plane, what do we mean by normal line, how to draw the surface and how to consider a special input from the domain. So in this talk we are going to discuss about constrained optimization which means now we want to find maxima and minima on the surface but we cannot take any point randomly from the domain which simply means that now we are restricted to a particular domain and then we are finding its maxima or minima relative to the given surface. For example, suppose I ask you to find a location which is at the highest peak on the mountain. Obviously you will say that it will be at the top of the mountain. But if I restrict your journey at a particular level, for example if I ask you to move on a mountain at a particular distance from a reference point. So now what will happen? You are not moving towards the top. You are moving somewhere in between that two points. So now your journey will be randomly on that mountain and the top point is over here. So now what will be the maximum and what will be the minimum in your journey? This is the reference to understand constrained optimum values. So without wasting much time, let us start this thing which is known as Langrage Multipliers method. So first of all, we are going to discuss its geometric interpretation that what do we mean by this method geometrically. And for that reason, I am considering one example of function given by 1 plus xy. This means I am considering a surface which is represented by 1 plus xy. Also now I am restricted myself to move only on this curve which is given by g which is x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0. That means now I am moving on the surface but my input is coming from this circle in xy plane. So now you can see clearly from this graph that what is the shape of this surface 1 plus xy? It is almost near to the saddle surface where we have minima in one direction and we have maxima in one direction at origin. Now to choose this surface and to consider a constraint which is x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0, now I am restricting myself to move only on the circle which is represented here in red color in the domain which is xy plane which is highlighted by gray color. So you can see the surface in the cyan, you can see domain in gray color, you can see a circle on which the point is moving and then you can see a cow which is traced on the surface which is a saddle surface by black circular disc. So this is our focus now. The first part is surface, second part is this circle in the domain and third part is the path which is traced by this surface. Now let us move to this structure and to understand how we can find actually maxima and minima for this surface by remaining on the circle. So what I will do, I will take a point which is on the circle and I will take one complete circular path and I will again come back to the original position. So that means now we are moving in domain by this and then I am taking a point which is parallelly moving on the surface to understand that how actually this blue curve is stressed on surface 1 plus xy. So you can see very easily by this graphics that a point which is on the surface is stressing this blue particular curve. 
Now let me take the top view and by taking its contour map, it will be easy for us to find maxima and minima. So now the concept which I'm going to use over here is, if I take a point on the domain and its particular value on the surface, and if I take a tangent, then over here you can see I'm moving a point on the circular disk and I'm considering its tangent also. Now at this junction, you can clearly see that there will be some points on the graph where contour lines and circular disk, they are maintaining the same tangent, means the tangent on the contour as well as the tangent on the circle, they will be exactly same. Can we say anything about these four particular options? The answer is, if you look again the same thing graphically in 3D and if I take a point, now I am denoting contour lines by red on the surface, you can see clearly at the maximum point, whenever point is passing through that location, its tangent is almost parallel to that contour line which is red and it is in fact the highest point on our journey by this blue. Here you will see clearly, now see at this point tangent was parallel to that red line at height 1.5 and at this junction tangent line is parallel to a contour line which is at height 0.5. So graphically now it is very easy to check which contour line is barely touching this particular path on three dimensional surface. At that contour line our function is going to attain maximum or minimum. Now, we will not consider a contour line which is crossing or which is touching the surface at multiple points because they are the points which are at the intermediate level. So it is clear from this graphic that if I consider a contour line which is barely touching our curve and then at that point you can say our function can be maximum or minimum. Now let us move to second part. So now we observed everything in 2D in the contour map and everything in 3D in the contour map. So what we ultimately got is if I take a tangent line which is for the point on the circle and if I find its normal then it is given by this small blue line and this is nothing but gradient of g. I am considering my constraint which is a circle in the domain. I am finding its tangent which is barely touching the tangent or which is coincident with the tangent of a contour line which is represented by orange color. So now a tangent line on the contour is represented by orange line and it is actually exactly same tangent and so its normal will be also in the same direction and suppose that normal is given by gradient of f. Now what will happen? If I take the same structure in 3D, it will look exactly like this. This is what I want to mention. That if you move your point on the domain and its parallel structure which is happening on the surface at a point where it is touching the contour line, tangents are coincident and so the normals are in the same direction. So focus on this thing only that normals are in the same direction. So now we can define method of Langerhans multipliers. So the method is this, we need to find a value of lambda such that gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g. As we know that these two normals are falling on the same direction and then we already have this constraint g equal to 0. So now we will focus throughout the solution on these two conditions and we want to find value of lambda which is nothing but the Langerhans multiplier and we want to optimize the surface. So now let us consider our example 1 plus xy and then constrain x square plus y square equal to 1. So I am taking our first condition gradient of f equal to lambda times gradient of g. So I am on the left hand side I am taking gradient of the function which is nothing but y comma x. I am writing the vector in a point notation whereas on the other side it is lambda times 2x comma 2y. I am taking gradient of function g. 
Now simplifying this, we will get two equations. As this equation was a vector equation, I am considering x coordinate with x coordinate, y coordinate with y coordinate. So it is y equal to lambda times 2x and x equal to lambda times 2y. So combining these two by taking value of x into our first equation, finally we will receive y as 4 lambda square y, which means that either y is 0 or we can say lambda is plus or minus 1 half. But if we take y equal to 0, our resulting value of x will be 0 and that means it gives you that the point of conclusion is origin which is not in our domain. So we will ignore that value and we will focus only on this value of lambda. So this means the value of Langra's multiplier is plus or minus one half. If I plug in this value into our condition which was derived by the vector equation then I will receive two values of y which is plus x or minus x. This gives me two different lines. So this is the conclusion at the end of our first condition which is gradient of f is lambda times gradient of g which results into y equal to plus or minus x. Now let us consider our second condition which is g equal to 0. So if I take x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0 and if I take the value of y as plus or minus x, ultimately it will give me value of x as plus or minus under root 1 half. And similarly, if I plug in the value into that equation, it gives me value of y as plus or minus 1 half. So at the end of our second condition, the resulting values are four different points. So all these four points are located at the same distance from origin root 1 by 2, root 1 by 2. So let us consider this whole situation graphically. If I plot this line y equal to minus x, line y equal to x and if I denote this point root 1 by 2, root 1 by 2 in first quadrant similarly root 1 by 2 minus root 1 by 2 in fourth quadrant both negative in the third first negative and second uh, positive into fourth quadrant. Then this is the whole situation where we can find the optimum values. Now if you look carefully at this junction also we are deriving the point which are point of contact with the contour lines. So now I am mentioning equations of line also in the image. So now if I find value of function at first point which is represented in the first quadrant by green color and its value is 1.5. If you look carefully that value of 1.5 is nothing but the height of the contour line which is represented by 1.5. Similarly the second point it is in the fourth quadrant represented by orange color and again the answer is 0.5. In third quadrant, I am taking a pink color to represent the point and in fourth, in second quadrant, I am taking blue color. So you can clearly see over here the values are 1.5 and 0.5 respectively for all these four points. So by observing these values, we can say the maximum value which we can achieve on this surface by remaining on the circle is 1.5 and the minimum value is 0.5. So the maxima and minima for the functions are 1.5 and 0.5 respectively. This is the first point, second point, third point, fourth point and the values which are maximum is 1.5 it is on the contour which is at height 1.5 and minimum value is 0.5 which is on the contour of 0.5 and the same thing I'll show you in 3D also here I'm taking a same structure but now I'm taking in three dimensional surface. So clearly you can see the maximum value is at height 1.5 means at the contour with level 1.5 and minimum is at height 0.5. So I hope all of you understand this concept of constrained maxima and minima through this Langerhagen method. So this is end of our first chapter which is partial derivative and its application. Now onwards we will switch to the second part of calculus which is integral calculus. We will start from the first point of integration, how to define integration, what are the uses of integration and then later on we will generalize it to the multivariable functions. Thank you. LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology.